Hi, I'm Brad Philpott, and I'm the author of the course book called English A Language and Literature for the IB Diploma. And I'm here to talk to you today about uh, selecting literary works and non-literary texts for our students to read in the classroom. <clears throat> I think with this guide, there's an exciting opportunity here to read a broad range of texts. As you know, for uh, the non-literary side of the course, we can read a, a range of texts from brochures, movie posters, um, we can watch uh, TV commercials with students and analyze those with them together. Uh, there's also a real, really uh, big opportunity here to explore a range of literary works. And there are several uh, requirements here for selecting literary works as a teacher. Uh, as you may know, at standard level, students read four literary works, and at higher level, students read six literary works. At standard level, students read one work from the prescribed reading list and one work from other languages, PRLs, or prescribed reading list, and two freely chosen works. At standard level, there are two works from the PRL, two works from other language PRLs, and two works freely chosen. I'll walk you through some of these terms uh, in brief so you understand them. PRL, or prescribed reading list, is a list, an online database, that you can find under my IB on the Program Resource Center for English A Language and Literature. And you'll see that it's a long list. For, if you filter out just English, there are already 300 authors from which you can choose. There are also 300 authors from each list, and there are 55 lists, one from each language that's recognized by the IB. So for your other language PRL, it's necessary to look at um, other languages and find works from the authors that would be appropriate for your students. I'd like to talk briefly about the term freely chosen. Um, this could be interpreted two ways. You may freely decide which works your students read, or you may give your students some choice in which literary works they read. Freely chosen works can be works in translation um, as well. They could be on the PRL, from authors from the PRL, or they could be, um, again, just students' free choices. I think there are a couple things worth considering here when um, selecting works. First of all, giving students freedom over at least one literary work uh, creates a great opportunity for the individual oral. Exposing students to a range of poets, for example, is a good idea, and asking students to select maybe their favorite poet, and asking them to find 15 to 20 poems by that author is also good practice. Uh, this gives them some autonomy over their own learning, and it motivates them, I'm sure. Finally, there's also something to consider. The fact that at standard level, students will have to have read works from two different times, two different places, and two different literary forms. At higher level, students will have to have read three different time periods, th works from three different places, and works from three different literary forms. Just to def clearly define what this means, time period. Time period is defined by century, and you'll see that also on the PRL. And place is defined by both country and continent. And as you'll see on the PRL, there are five continents from which we can choose, and of course, many and many countries. So when the IB defines three uh, places, they mean uh, uh, three countries from two different continents. Literary forms, you'll also notice that there is um, four literary forms that the IB recognizes, prose fiction, prose nonfiction, poetry, and drama. Technically, uh, song lyrics, uh, which are perfectly suitable for um, reading, uh, for the literary works requirement, uh, fall under poetry, and the reading of graphic novels falls under prose fiction. I hope this short film helps you select the right literary works for you and your students so that both of you are engaged with all kinds of exciting texts.